Taide, Emilio Sipka, and this is the Petrus Review. In this episode, we continue along with the Rocky, jo Rocky Jones Space Ranger series with Minutes from Outer Space. This was the second of the 12 or so telepic uh, re edits that were done of the old uh, Rocky Jones Space Ranger TV series. Now, this was issued to television in 1956 and was directed by Hollingsworth Morse and written by Warren Wilson and produced by Ro Roland Reed. The cast includes Richard Crane, Sky Beckett, Sally Mansfield, Robert Lydon, Maurice Cass, Charles Meredith, Walter Coy, Nestor Paiva, Patsy Iannone, John John, and uh, Patsy Parsons as Cleolanta. Now, like all of the uh, Rocky Jr. and Space Ranger ser serials, this is available on various platforms, from old VHS tapes to public domain operated DVDs, internet streaming sites, and even YouTube. For this particular feature, I watched my archive print, which I extracted from the Sci-Fi Classics 50 film box set that was issued in Australia back around 2005 by Palace Entertainment. Judging by, from the quality of that print, it, it could mean sourced from VHS tape. Enough of the story. A mysterious missile of great power strikes Earth near the International Airport, causing some damage but not killing a soul. Professor Newton examines the debris, as it landed near him, and concludes that the missile was made entirely of some kind of hyperdense crystal that possessed immense energy and constructed by an unknown race of advanced technology far beyond the abilities of mankind. Space Ranger Rocky Jones, his second in command Winky, Auxiliary Ranger Vina Ray, Space Ranger Cadet Bobby, and Newton all travel to the suspected source of the missile, Fornax, one of Jupiter's moons. There, they are astonished to find humanoid aliens living on Fornax, which has twice the gravity of Earth. Also surprising is the presence of the only human living with these aliens, a rogue professor named Cardos, wanted back on Earth for murdering two assistants, who had gotten stuck on the moon after the scary rocket ship crashed there. Cardos had convinced the aliens that humans are treacherous and not to be trusted, but Rocky manages to sway the alien king's conscience enough to persuade him to help him repair the XV-2. Once the orbit jet has been su successfully repaired, Rocky agrees to take the alien king back to Earth to meet with Space Secretary, Secretary Jake, to finally convince him that mankind is friendly and a worthy ally. But unknown to them is the fact that rogue Space Ranger Griff and some agents from Officius have been monitoring the situation and are now planning to land an invasion party on Fornax to claim it as their own territory, a situation Carlos is happy to help with. Like I said, this is the second of the 12 or so feature length re edits made from the 1954 science fiction television serial Rocky Jones Space Ranger. Minutes from Outer Space is, is comprised of the three chapters of the original serial titled Bobby's Comet and was released uh, in 1956. For the un uninitiated, uh, Rocky Jones Space Ranger is perhaps the world's first one space opera. It filmed in 1952 but not issued until, to television until 1954. The movie re-edits were issued uh, two years later in 1956. Unlike the other sci-fi shows at the time, Rocky Jones Space Ranger was shot entirely on film stock. The whole thing was shot on film, which is the reason why the entire serial exists perfectly intact to this day, while the rest have disappeared into the void of history. Despite only lasting a single season, Rocky Jones Space Ranger was quite popular in its day, and now still commands a decent cult following, thanks to its survival. The protagonist character of the heroic Space Ranger Rocky Jones, played by Richard Crane, is an excellent archetype of what stood for heroism in the future envisioned in the 1950s. A brave and dedicated man of action, equally adept at selling scores of his fists as well as his words and skills of diplomacy, and always ready to serve with duty and diligence. So essentially Rocky Jones is the original Captain Kirk and Doctor Who combined to one package, long before Kirk and Doctor Who came around. In the case of Menace from Outer Space, we have an early example of a common Rocky Jones Space Ranger trope. Encountering an extremely advanced but nomadic alien race, depicted resembling humans, who at first distrust the humans, but eventually learn that mankind to be trusted as a worthy ally. Here the first encounter isn't exactly too friendly. The aliens here launch a crystal missile towards Earth, which crashes and causes some damage, depi depicted by stock footage of construction work at the Hoover Dam, but doesn't kill anyone. After figuring out the crystal missile came from a surprisingly close source, one of Jupiter's moons, Rocky and his crew get to work in travelling there. Before I was amused at how Rocky's ship, the Orbit Joe, is capable of deep space travel, but it requires extra fuel just to reach a location as close as Jupiter. To be fair to the show's writers, it is probably because this moves out of the range of the many refueling stations positioned around space to help with Earth ships, so that's a possibility. 
The problem of working out how to get there safely providing at least a third of the show's story. Once we get on the floor next, the show switches gears to a case of an alien race, decked out in outfits that look like a cross between stereotypical Arabian Nights style garb and third rate knockoff ancient Roman gear, looking for all the world like they were swiped from Hollywood's vast costume department's rejects closet. Already knowing about Earth people thanks to a rogue scientist and murderer, who wants to utilize his adopted home's advanced weaponry to start a war against his own people. Eventually, the alien king listens to reason from Rocky Jones, in a little list, a lesson on the Earth lines from Bobby, and decides to take his chances and travel to Earth in a modified orbit jet to uh, meet with Space Secretary Drake and finally seal a deal of friendship, as well as dealing with the rogue professor and the equally rogue Space Ranger Grip, who somehow survived his car crash in the previous adventure, probably because the Rangers are too ass to search for his body in the wreckage of the car Rocky exploded, and prevent the officious uh, agents from claiming Fornax for their own ends. This is pretty exciting at times, but it helps if you're a fan of fit 1950 science fiction, as those guys knew what to expect from that decade in terms of the average pacing. I am willing to bet that most of today's Generation Z knuckleheads wouldn't sit for more than 5 minutes of this, given how they're not bright enough to learn the lessons this kind of stuff taught to the kids who grew up in the 50s. To round it off, this is a typically solid example of 1950s TV space opera adventure entertainment. Capable of both entertaining and educating children of any era and some true virtues. Not that ridiculous trance stuff the alphabet mafia is desperately trying to shove down the throats of today's children. If you're a sci-fi fan and want to find something to show to your children that isn't a pissney, then this is a solidly good bet. I give Menace from Outer Space a B, 6 out of 10. It's solid great for a solid feature. There is no good or new team in this feature and that's the way it should be with family entertainment. So that's it for Menace from Outer Space, gets a B, 6 out of 10, it's solid. Okay, I'm gonna keep on going with these Rocket Jones Space Ranger stuff for a while. <laughs> At least in a couple of episodes. And we'll see how that goes. Okay, if you have any questions about films or DVDs, just hit me up in the comment section, I'll be happy to answer. Hope you guys are staying safe, take it easy, and that's it for this review. See ya.